She thought that no one could take the place of her daughter. She would have preferred I call you Antoinette after her. But Catherine was the name your mother had chosen for you. When your mother died, God rest her soul, I said that Catherine must be the name you were christened with. I don't understand, Father, why we should be speaking of my mother, our sorrows, in front of this stranger. Uh, not quite a stranger. Catherine, I married again. What? A long time ago. When? A year or so after your mother died. I was heartbroken. I needed comfort. Married who? Why don't I know her? That isn't strictly so. You did know her. One of our friends? I married the woman of my choice. Who, father? Mrs. Bundy. What? Mrs. Bundy. She was our cook. And what of that, pray? She was. She was also my wife. No. Until we decided it was best she should live somewhere else. No. It was a secret marriage. Nobody knew. Why a secret, then? Unless you were ashamed. <laughs> Catherine, you forget yourself. And remember, we have company with us. Won't you answer my question, Father? Why a secret? We preferred it that way. We? She and I. What did it matter what she thought? It mattered a good deal to me, Catherine. And I won't have you speaking disparagingly of Mrs. Bundy, Mrs. Havisham, as she became. I forbid it. Do you hear me? Mrs. Bundy died. Very sadly, she did die. Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Why is he here? I suggested to Arthur he might wait for us outside in the garden. I must have misunderstood. Now you're here now. In our drawing room. There is a very good reason for Arthur's presence. What on earth? Catherine! May I ask what the reason is, Father? My wife and I, the second Mrs. Havisham and I, we had a child. Mrs. Havisham gave birth to a son. That son is... Yours truly. That son is Arthur. No. No, this can't be. You think what? That this is a tale our father has confessed? Arthur! Our father! Arthur is your half-brother, Catherine. Mrs. Bundy, she told you that Arthur you was your say son. say nothing that you might have cause to regret, Catherine. Arthur is your own flesh and blood. That is a fact. I haven't even removed my travelling clothes, and I learned this. It must be something of a shock to you, I appreciate. <laughs> but, but I wish the situation to be acknowledged. By you, by all of us. Because Arthur will be coming to live with us, Catherine. Live with us? Yes. Here at Satis House. Oh, ye gods! Catherine! Is this all? The fourth with your brother, your half-brother, will be known as Arthur Havisham. But... Arthur Havisham. That's not his real name. It will be now. In time, when he's finished his schooling, Arthur will need to learn about the brewery, receive a training... Oh, Sally. And you knew. I'd heard. The house knows now. You could have sent me word. Your father warned us not to. She was Mrs. Havisham. Between the two of them, wealthy men can only marry their cooks in secret, Catherine. That's how the world prefers it. To marry her, he must have had strong feelings, don't you think? And in a way, he was honouring your mother's memory by not taking a wife in public. You mean well, I know, Sally. Oh, it's all too much of a shock to me. Of course it is. I'm even glad to have you here. I shouldn't be. Not here in your bedroom. No one saw you come in. I'm very adept, am I not, smuggling you upstairs? If I'm found, though. You won't be. If I want you here with me. You're like your father, a Havisham, the same strong will. Maybe. Certainly you are. Oh, stay with me, Sally. Let's lie here. Up on the bed. With my arm around you. There. Now who's protecting who, May? Eh? We used to do this. Just like this, didn't we? Lying side by side. Mr. Abisham heard about it, I'm sure. He knows I can't sleep sometimes. The dark frightens me. I see shapes, spectres, things with wings, you've no idea. Oh, when you let down your hair... It must be as long as a ladder. I should get it cut. Don't, Sally. I won't allow it. Now, you can't cut it, you see? I see. With you here, Sally, I can even start to forget the bad things. Have you saddled persimmon for me? The girth needs to take now, little miss. 
Haven't you been exercising him properly? Oh, yes, Miss Havisham. He should have been saddled up for me when I asked. Problem of some sort? It's you. You're just the person to tell me. Tell you what? Which is the best mount here? Yours, I presume? There are others. What would you say yours was worth? I don't concern myself with that. Lucky you. Do any ever get sold off from here? These aren't questions for me. What's keeping them? We haven't said good morning yet, have we? Is it? Is it? A good morning? I do hope so. You don't speak like your mother. No? Well, money disposes of a lot of sins, doesn't it? And buys others, I'm sure. What's the point of money otherwise? Where is that horse? Isn't it saddled yet? Shortly, miss. I would like us to be friends, Catherine. I'd like you to explain the rituals of Satis House to me. Why? Why? So that I might learn to fit in, of course. Why do you require me to explain? Who else should I ask in that case? The servants. Should I know my place? So that I can go about my business. I don't want us to be formal, Catherine. Keep your distance. Come on. I said... We can't let a riding crop come between us, can Keep we? Keep away! <clears throat> That'll win you. Could be a, an expensive action, that one, Miss Catherine Havisham. Could cost you dear. I don't know what you're talking about. You will. Out of my way. He doesn't knock at doors, Arthur. Kicks off his boots, never picks anything up. You see what I've got to put up with now, Sally. He's not all bad, is he? He's always late for meals. Spits fruit stones into the fireplace grate. He's so uncouth. He must have something to redeem him. No. <laughs> I wish I could laugh too. I'm just trying to be fair. Allow him a fair hearing. You shouldn't bother. Truly, Sally, he's worse than bad. No? How? He pocketed my father's dropped change. I saw him do it. You're sure of that? I saw it with my own eyes. He doesn't care about his horse. He has to learn these things, doesn't he? It's his nature to blame. The devil in him. Catherine. How long do you mean to continue silent? There have been so many silences. About my mother. About my grandmother. Then let's not add another. Very well. We can't communicate by silence. Our father. What? You said our father. That sounds like God. I think he is God, too. Arthur? No one to tell him he isn't, I suppose. You know, I feel this is my dear old chimney corner already. You've been away at school. Still my home. I've always lived here. And now I do, too. High time I got to fit in with you lot. What makes you think you ever will? Oh, I'm adaptable, you bet. Worry not, sister. Half, sister. I'll make sure we're all quite cosy together. You don't condemn him, Sally. He's awful. It's because I stand a little way back. You think I condemn him too much? But just look how deeply those lines are etched on my father's face. Catherine, uh, stay seated. You wish to see me, father? Uh, I'm not disturbing you. My legion of friends will be disappointed, but... No. This town of ours, I feel, doesn't offer you the company you deserve. I feel you must be equipped better for the wider world. And to that purpose, I have come to an arrangement. An arrangement? That you be prepared for your future life. I don't understand, Father. Your tutors have done their best. They've assured me of your proficiency in the various subjects they've taught you. But I should prefer your education to be more complete. She is Lady Chadwick, over in Red Hill. And she has three children, two older than me. And I'm to be with them for several months at a time. And your father? Thinks I should be glad. And you're not? If you could come with me, Sally. My father needs minding. I must leave mine. He must have his reasons. My mother. What's that? Is it because of my mother you're sending me away? How's that? Because she was a lady. You used to tell me. Yes. Yes, she was. And you will be as well. I didn't know Lady Chadwick was an acquaintance of yours. It is to our mutual benefit, hers and mine. I don't see how... Never mind that. The whys and the hows. Now you have an instructress, a sponsor... 
This will be your true education. Lady Chadwick, this is a pleasure indeed to welcome you to Durley Chase. Now, meet my children. Uh, this is my elder daughter, Isabella. Miss Havisham. Miss Chadwick. And my younger daughter, Marianne. Miss Havisham. Miss Chadwick. I hope you've had a pleasant journey. Yes, very, thank you. And now, my son, William, uh, who is away at Cambridge. But not now. <laughs> not now, no. <laughs> Mr Chadwick. Delighted to make your acquaintance, Miss Havisham. And uh, William's fellow student, cousin Edmund. Who puts up with us, so to speak. Miss Havisham. Uh, Edmund's from the north, Northumberland. We've taken him in. Oh, Edmund's easily taken in, I should say. William, <laughs> my cousin is reading for holy orders, Miss Havisham. When can we stop being so formal, Mama? Uh, certainly not before our new house guest has been conducted to her quarters, and only if she approves. Oh, you will approve. Oh, don't answer him. Away with you, William. When you had me assure you I would be here. The sacrifices you make, oh, William. Shush now. <laughs> Come with me, my dear, and let me explain to you how things get done at Derby. Of course, we have to do our studies in the library, which is through there. Don't embarrass us, Catherine. Don't show us up, please. That's unlikely. When William and Edmund are here, it's easier. Let them do your exercises for you. Catherine is a more honest pupil than you, Belle, I'm sure. And we have to draw and play nicely and sing sweetly. But the rest of the time, we pursue pleasure. <laughs> Two thousand and more years of philosophy, and this is the result. Isabella Chadwick. We pursue pleasure, hence the name you see, Dirly Chase. <laughs> I wake in a golden glow, Sally. Early sunshine through the new yellow damask of my bedroom curtains. My head on a duck's down pillow, the soft mass of feathers in the coverlet, the thickness of the sheets. Oh, the comfort and refinement. Outside, if I could see... A fox will have left fresh footprints in the dew. You play beautifully, Miss Havisham. Your old-fashioned courtesy is all very well, Edmund. May I? Certainly. You play beautifully, Catherine. You're sure I won't wake Lady Chadwick? One of the private Durley rituals. Now you really can feel at home. Mozart's best. No, Bach. Purcell. Almost perfect. You could do better. I mean, it intimates the perfect, the ideal. It takes us to just a hair's breadth away. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's never absolutely perfect, because then we would have heard everything. The apotheosis. Heaven on earth. Uh, now that's impossible. The music of the morning stars, here in their hearts did sound. The utterly sublime is impossible, until we reach the Godhead. Only God and our absorption is immaculately perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't understand what you're saying. You're not laughing, Catherine. I take a little longer. A smile is worse. Laughter ribs me, but a smile chides me. You have a way with the reels, Miss Havisham. Thank you, Mr Chadwick. But I sense your mother would rather you danced with Miss Graham. What makes you think that? By the way she tilts her fan. Oh, clever old Catherine. I can't claim the credit. Mm, for knowing the ways of the world. This little world. <laughs> Isabella was telling me. She noticed Lady Astley doing it, signalling with her fan. Well, I'm dancing with you. Miss Graham might be a very good dancer. Oh, I don't see how she could outskip step you. <laughs> My teacher in Kent didn't praise me as you do. Oh, shame. But there's only so much can be taught. The rest's instinct. And you deserve praise, too. I'm only as good as my partner. You've convinced me. Even I can feel air beneath my feet. Plato. Plato. Can you tell me, William, what it is you study at Cambridge? It's about the idea, in inverted commas. The idea of things. There's a reality which doesn't alter, even though appearances will. We have to seek it out beyond mere sensation. Reason alone can prove it. Slow down a bit, William. No, you don't have to. Explain clearly. I can understand. Or I shall, once I've thought it over. Someone appreciates me, Edmund. The reek of hops, let me guess, is not to your fancy. 
It is a strong odour, Father. Hops are a serious business. The smell gets everywhere. Oh, surely that is a small inconvenience to you, given the benefits which the odour, as you call it, trails in its wake. You must have grown used to it after 17 years, I'm thinking. Yes. Yes, I know. The Havisham name isn't good enough for you now? Why do you say that to me? What would you be known as? The Havisham name suits me very well. Very well. Oh, Sally, I have so much to tell you. How is it to be back again? I could smell the marshes so strongly as I came to them. Mud, weed, iodine, salt, sour and nippy. It was as if I was being sucked back to the old place. And the Godwitz calls and the plovers, everything the same. Oh, but things have turned so different for me. Tell me again. The litany. Father? You haven't forgotten. You knew when you were a child. The names of Havisham's puppets. Oh, the strange ones. I haven't forgotten. You could recite them to me. No. No. Goose and cabbage. Cocoa uh, No, 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 no. no. It's a start how you did then. In order. The ton and loot. Shovel and boot. Turkey slave, cock and pie, leather bottle, hundred house. Parson. Uh, Parson and Clark, <laughs> Rose of Denmark, goat and compasses, cue in a corner. Next. Uh, trip to Jerusalem and. And good. Good King, King Lud. Lud. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> good King Lud. It's the one you always used to stumble over. <laughs> and still do. But the only one. Well done. Un gentilhomme. I beg your pardon, Lady Chadwick? Your father, Mr. Havisham. He is a true gentleman. Yes. One of nature's unnatural gentlemen. The silver is quite new this time, Sally, for our tea. It has the gleam and sparkle of its newness. And the table it was served to us from, the wood, had such a polish. I could watch us all there as well as in the sight of the teapot. They make me very welcome. Everyone smiles at me. I forget Arthur and the tribulations he brings. Oh, I don't forget you, of course, Sally. I think of you often. I can speak quite easily to Marianne. But our confidence goes back much, much longer. So that is quite different. And look, a brown riding habit like yours. Pompadour, as it should be. A guinea per yard, shameless. A white dimity waistcoat. Wind lapels, excellent. Skirt. Lawn. Hat. What a splendid feather. A great coat to match. A huge. And the little details are just as important. White neckerchief, there's no point in bothering unless you get it exactly <laughs> right. And you have, Catherine. <laughs> because you told me. Otter fur, brown silk, <laughs> see, Marianne? Too swell for where I come from. But not for where we're going to. Edmund. I thought if I could help with your studies... I've managed without you in your term time. Yes. Ah, Virgil. Of course, this must all seem very childish to you. Oh, Virgil's sentiments aren't. Dido says, here, it was not given to me to lead my life without new passion, innocently, the way wild creatures live, and not to touch these depths. You didn't give me a chance to translate. <laughs> the next passage... I'm amusing to you, Edmund. Uh, no, no. My inability is? No, not at all. If I was smiling, then it was involuntary. So you may have been smiling after all. With pleasure at your achievement, to hear you conquer the text. Oh, Dido. I wish we could be done with her. Oh, she fascinates me, though. Because to you she's weak? Oh, no, 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 not at all. Quite the reverse. All that guilt she has to struggle with. Her guilt that nothing is able to count against her passion. But doesn't a clergyman-to-be regard guilt as a failing? Oh, it can be an inspiration, too. A spur. Isn't Dido mad, though? From far away I shall come after you with my blood furies. I shall be everywhere a shade to haunt you. She sees that everything to follow will be a falling away. Life won't hold. So she consecrates herself to the cause of her happiness, the happiness she knew with an heiress. She refuses to let it die. But she has to die herself. Yeah, a minor detail. <laughs> Throwing herself onto a pyre. You care for empresses and queens? No, 
for tragic heroines. Why then? Suffering and courageous women who deserve their own immortality. Now you must tell us, Catherine. Tell us truly. Be honest now. About what? Your opinion of our brother William. We thought you a not quite disinterested observer. Oh, you shouldn't. Well, you noticed too. We had the tact not to say. But you asked Catherine what she thought. Now, what do you think, Catherine? About William. About William. He's very agreeable, courteous, considerate, I should think. Agreeable, personable, or would... Handsome, do. <laughs> that too. He is all those things. It is no hardship for me to be with him. Again, if you would oblige me. Yes, Father. Another six months, Catherine, and you'll be up to the best hereabouts. There must be better players than for I. polish, I mean. Deportment, etiquette, elocution, all your ladylike accomplishments. The best and no mistaking. I can't take these. I'm not wearing them now. You have no idea how fashionable we have to be, Sally. Oh, they might have been made for you. I suppose they were, now that I've got them to wear. I could take you to one of our assembly rooms. Why don't I? No. And, and pass you off as my cousin. No one will suspect. No, no. Then what earthly use will the dresses be? I shall wear them. When? Tell me. You won't wear them. I mean to. Promise me. I promise. When then? When I wish to give my passable imitation of Catherine Havisham. Oh, I haven't seen that. No, of course not. We <laughs> never recognise ourselves. <laughs> and you haven't mentioned him. Their brother, Mr. William. No. Well? Well, I... Oh, Sally, what do you think? I think you're keeping me in the dark. Only you would guess. Well? I expect he thinks I'm very stupid. Why? After his Cambridge company. What's he like? Oh, he... <laughs> All right. He has fair hair, white, white teeth, golden eyes, a Greek profile... Women swoon at his passing. Shall I go on? No, no. Oh! oh! Arthur, what do they teach you at that school of yours? You've got to go about with our noses stuck up in the air. Not good manners, anyhow. Well, you know all about those, do you? Living with that sorry rout. Don't call them that. I don't know why you bother yourself with them. Because... Well... It doesn't matter. It matters, or you wouldn't go chasing after them like you do. It doesn't matter about having to explain anything to you. Because you can't. Because I'm tired of listening to you. Well, can't you move all your stuff there? And leave you with the run of this place. That's what you want, of course. What do you know of what I want? Precious little. Or care to. Dear Sally, I have to say it was a relief to get away. From Satis house, but not, not from you. To be back on the road again. The carriage turned the last corner out of Durley Tye, and I saw the house's dome, and my heart lifted. Isabel! Catherine! In her winged chariot. <laughs> don't recall. I'm sorry, were you speaking to me? I wondered if you could recall. Recall, sir, should I? The Bohemians and Zagans. Yes, yes, it's Chartridge. Oh, yes, I was there. In a red silk coat and blue petticoat. Jackson's Habit Warehouse, can I guess? No, we devised the costumes. Excellent you were, too. You had some lambs in tow. We were pretend shepherdesses. <laughs> Pretending to pretend. Oh! Famous trick, that one. I beg your pardon? A lady dropping her fan. <laughs> Catherine, there you are. It was just someone who said you... What, Catherine? Did I interrupt you with someone? Well, he was... over there. Where? Oh, no, I don't see him. Come on, we feel quite abandoned by you. So, you've survived the evening. Oh, it's you. Very attentive friends you have. I'm here with them. Wanting to share some of your glory, I expect. 
I'm sorry. Why be sorry? At least it means they don't mind that they're eclipsed by you. I don't think I understand. Your modesty is very becoming, Miss Havisham. You know my name. On my programme. You've marked a red cross against it. Now who? Oh, Lady Charlotte. Lady Chadwick, I mean. Raises her eyeglass and surveys the splendid scene. You, uh, you must excuse me. Goodbye, Miss Havisham. Until we meet again. Catherine will know. We've been looking for William. I haven't seen him. No? How odd. Where is he, then? Let's escape the noise, shall we? It's always been understood, that's all. We've always known. And William knows, too? Oh, yes. He will make a good match and assure the future of Durley. The chase and the land, the farm, too. When? When he finds her. Her? Whoever she is. The one who's destined to be the mistress of the chase one day. <laughs> Excuse me, Catherine. Uh, Mother, uh, let me change places with you. You're getting a draft. Mama always sits there. What a hero you are, William. Sit down by Catherine. Mama hasn't said, have you, Mama? Mama hasn't been the same since Cheltenham. Oh, the drafts there are terrible. Uh, you do want to change places with me? Well, of course you do. <sighs> then apologise again to Catherine. Will you excuse me, Catherine? Really, William? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, needs must, as you can see. A likely story. It's all right, honestly. I'm waiting for my page, Turner. William, where is he? Edmund, have you seen William? Pray not. Do you know Annie? Gone to Waterloo, Kenneth Gundogs, miss. What? Then he's got the loan of. Those he's got the... been given the loan of. Same thing, Marianne. You sound like Edmund now. But didn't he say? No, not to me. Nor to me. Can I? A page, Turner. Allow me. <sighs> to inspire such devotion. <laughs> Thank you. Which of us? You first. We do it alternately. We turn by turns. <laughs> so this is what Cambridge educates you for. Thefts. Thefts here, in Satis House. It was bound to happen, Father. Why so? It's not something that's ever happened before. Exactly. What's changed then? Then we just lived here by ourselves. And now, Jason tells me, he saw for sale in Canterbury a silver chafing dish engraved with an H. A curfew? In my own home? That's ridiculous. You've got an answer for everything. And if I forget? I shall regard forgetfulness as disobedience. <sighs> Dead against me, sister, aren't you? You're an enemy to yourself. No one could do it better. You told him. No more cash. It was you. My father can make his own mind up. Whisper, whisper in his ear. Keep your voice down. You're revolting. I won't forgive you. You've put him up to this. I don't know what you're make going Make Arthur a pauper. As if I don't deserve the ready. Every bloody farthing. You're a savage. And you're a liar. A creeping Judas. I'm a Havisham. But so am I. How do I know that? Well... I don't, do I? Your father could be any Tom Dick. Ah! Creeping Judas! <gasps> Miss! Miss! Help me up. You're bleeding. Your cheek. My, my cheek, I know. Wait. Oh, wait a moment. I've got oh, flares, white flares in front of my eyes. Oh, they'll pass. Let me wipe away the blood. Miss. This is your brother's doing? Not my brother. A real brother wouldn't have done such a thing. His name's Compeson. Charles, I think. Charles Compeson. That's all I know. A stranger? Yes, Sally. He sounds quite a familiar stranger. It's a small world. Of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> 
face. Is it sore? Still raw. But laughter will get me better before anything else. I'll tell them you're back, shall I, miss? No. I saw them outside. I'll wait in the walled garden. Let it be a surprise to them. Yes, miss. A nice surprise, I'm sure. You know what William's like. Well, that's no reason, Belle. You speak to him, then. He won't listen. Exactly. Oh, it could be worse. But I thought she was spoken for. Mrs Calvert, all but. Calvert's over 50. And very wealthy. Miss Constantine is quite wealthy enough. She can pick and choose. Why, William? Could you resist him? I didn't have my suspicions. What about? His constancy, of course. Oh, Catherine! Catherine, you're back. We, we weren't expecting you so soon. What time is it? How lovely to have you back with us. Uh-oh, not again. What's that? I spy. It's thingamabob. That compass and everywhere we go. Every blessed place. It is uncanny. Not necessarily. Am I missing something? He's not going to miss you, Catherine. I want to hear about you, Miss Havisham. What about me, Mr. Compasson? Anything you like. You're so eager to hear for some reason. I could tell you anything and you'd believe me. I'd believe Catherine Havisham. You wouldn't know if it was about me or not. <laughs> Who else could it be about? Sally. <laughs> Who on earth, Sally? She might be more interesting to hear about than me. I think not. You can't say most definitely. You need to contrast and compare. Well, this Sally first, and then, please, you. Sally has green eyes. Nothing so nice as tawny. Like yours. Thick hair. What colour? Copper. Fair for me. Like yours. A long neck. Well, that's fine. For swans. Quite dainty feet, considering. Tire too easily. Well, you won't believe me, but she's a very attractive girl, I assure you. I don't know what to do about him, Sally. About Arthur? Mm. Things will resolve themselves one way or another. Is it easier when I'm away? A little, yeah. I don't suppose we know the half of it. Sometimes, it's funny, he can find it in himself to be almost charming. Never with me. Charming with you, you mean? He quietens down when I'm not here. A bit, yeah. I didn't know you were a devotee of Haydn, Mr. Compasson. No. <laughs> no. You're not? Oh, it's very hot. And you won't tell me about yourself, about Catherine Havisham. Sally is our talisman. Maybe Sally could tell me about you. Well, you'd have to meet her first. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Shh, we're trying to listen. I'm mystified. By Sally? Of course by Sally. The blessed Sally. She's Catherine Havisham's twin, her other half. And that's as close as you let me get to you. Oh, please, Sue, mind. I filched an invitation for tonight. How? There are ways. But the Phyllis... Wouldn't be bothered with the likes of me. Oh, no, I didn't mean... Why? Why have you come? Intelligent woman like yourself. Can't you guess? Here again, Catherine. I didn't know he was going to be. We're not being nosy. But we're your friends, and friends are sometimes obliged to say what's weighing on their mind. It's late. We want what's best for you, Catherine. Stories do get about, you know. What stories? And there's usually good reason for them. It's been a lovely evening. Let's keep it like that. Oh, it's only trying. Well, Catherine's right. Please, don't blame me. The footmen in those preposterous white wigs must have added quite two feet to their height. a parting of the ways with Arthur, and I've changed my will. What's happened? He's not disinherited outright. There's something for him, a mind even. I see. I had no alternative. He'd have drained us dry. Is he coming back? I have no way of telling. 
He knows where to go to receive his keep. We go to assemblies, Sally, and there he is, Mr. Charles Compeson. And I see the pleasure he takes from my companion's irritation. He dares them to ignore him. He hasn't read Virgil or Goethe. He doesn't know Clementi's sonatas. But what doesn't he know about racecourse runners and their riders? Now, Chifley had 20 guineas on the second race, not the first. Both were his rides. Escape raced past the favourite, Chanticleer, came home well to the front. Now, tell me honestly, Catherine Havisham, what do you think of that? His father was a doctor at sea, but he's dead. His mother doesn't keep well. He has several siblings. He went to a harsh school in the West Country. A Scotch relative reneged upon an inheritance he was due. But he's at all the fashionable towns. Exeter, Salisbury, Nottingham, Chester. It's incumbent upon me to do a little work, too, I'm afraid. Norfolk way. To earn myself a living, keep body and soul together. You shouldn't apologise. Work is honest and true. That's your father's philosophy? No. It's my own experience. I now realise that it is. From Satis House, I see wealth make itself. When the windows are open, I smell it. They say, Sally, in a racing fight, and a young fellow can reach a hundred mile radius from London in a weekend. Oh, the things I want to tell you. How his being there gives my body jolts of excitement. I wake up thinking of him. It's him I dress to please, not the Chadwicks. I go to bed quite early and try to get to sleep as quickly as I can, because I know I'll find him waiting there for me in my dreams. I've confessed it. But shall I have the courage to send this to you by the post? You prefer fish to meat. You prefer grayling to mackerel and sole to grayling. How do you know that? You sleep with your window sash a little raised and never on two pillows. You carry a sachet of orange blossom in your portmanteau. Who told you? You write letters wearing a clip-on cotton frill over your cuff and you gargle with salt water three, always three times a day. It's guesswork. Is it? I don't know. You let down your hair last thing and give it 50 strokes with the brush. You wake at seven in the morning, whatever the season. You run dessert cream over the back of your spoon. You're guessing. I could be. Oh, someone's told you. Who? Oh, I couldn't betray a source, could I now? William. Yes. Engaged. Yes. To whom? Lucinda Osborne. I never thought he... She lives all of four miles away. We've always known them. But Lucinda... Oh, well. William must see the advantages. She's the plainest. Then I wish them well. Dear Sally, if your mother thinks you will do better in Hertfordshire, then who am I to disagree? But Hertfordshire? Why so far? Anyway... If you prefer, I send letters to you by way of your cousin. If you do hear anything of the reprobate Arthur, then do let me know. We've come to Wales, Clanifron Wells, to steep ourselves. You float in the pool of mineral water, looking up at the open sky above the colonnade. And then afterwards, you lie in one of the steam rooms, in a brown linen petticoat swathed in towels. Sheer bliss. I grant you that. He is a funny little thing, Catherine. What's that? Well, hardly little. Belle, that's a term of speech. It would have to be. Edmund doesn't agree, but she amuses me with those quaint country ways of hers. That's what we're supposed to be getting rid of, the rough hue. Mm, I like her, though. Don't be distracted. Remember, we're grooming her for a husband. Else, what's our father paying Mama all this money for? Every girl we know is being groomed. That's our sort of girl, Marianne. Maybe we won't be able to tell the difference once she's finished. I can see why you're a little cross. A little cross? Discovering my father's bought the Chadwick's favour. But, but? But I think you should stick it out, Catherine. With people who don't approve of me. That's not to say they don't like you. And they, they could be useful to you. The good camouflage for us. I suppose so. Mark my word. Trust me. Yes, I do. 
Hail. Edmund, you quite startled me. You like this corner of the woods too. I didn't know. I, uh, I just wanted some air. It's such a tangle of paths. Could trap the unwary. Your reading. I've interrupted you. I'll leave you. No, to... no, 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 no. How did Sir Thomas put it? Sir Thomas. Sir Thomas Brown. Ah. Love is the foolishest act, which dejects the wise man's cooled imagination. What about Dido? The more instinctive, the more natural, the more foolish, if you will, then the better, surely. You think I'm too solemn? Too young, perhaps. Don't we have to live a little first and read later? Well, how are we to know to avoid the pitfalls? Only by realising later that they were pitfalls. Don't you mind the prospect of suffering? I don't intend to suffer. My suffering will be thinking that I held back from life. The compting house clerks bring me the wrong ledgers when I ask. Yet you can do it. <coughs> Tan, green, red, black. Bond ledger, petty ledger, inventory ledger. Don't forget the stock ledger. How did you know that? I pick things up. Must be in the air. D does it interest you? What goes on in the brew house? Yes. Yes, it does. Would you like to know more? If you tell me. <laughs> Sit down a moment, Catherine. <coughs> I think I need to tell a Havisham. Then tell me, Father. Please. Once the yeast has sunk, you skim the film on top from the wort. When it's fermented, the green beer gets diverted into tanks for a few more days, and the yeast that's left, it mellows the beer's taste a bit more. And the conditioning? We add caramel. What does that do? Darkens the colour. Finings? That's something to do with sturgeon, isn't it? Sturgeon's air bladder finings thins the look of the brew. Sugar's useful for extra fermentation, and the dried hops there, they add some aroma. Some fellow will count himself lucky when he first sets eyes on you. Yes. Certainly. All these fancy accomplishments you've acquired in Surrey. So, that is what my education's for. It's the prospect for every young woman to be married. A responsibility, even. Or? There is no or in your case. Oh. <coughs> With all your advantages, those you have... And those you will have to your name. I see. I see. What's wrong? Am I such bad company? Something's wrong. You don't want to know that? Yes, I do. Charles. Another legacy I was depending on. It's, it's not coming my way after all. My damned cousin's disputing the old man's will. Just like in young Werther. What? Goethe. And of course I have accounts to settle. Then I'll lend you some money. How can you possibly... I can do, do it without my father discovering. No, Catherine. Why ever not? I couldn't take it. I insist. How much do you need? Uh, 80 pounds would do. Then we'll double it. 160 would do the job better, I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> there, at last, Charles Compeson is lost for words. I must see my father. Yes, Havisham. Please, let me pass. May I have a word? I'm attending to your father. He's collapsed. What's the matter? His heart has suffered. His heart? Because of his diseased lungs. His lungs? I gather your father had no foreknowledge. He had a winter cough and couldn't shift it. Please, if you could wait just a few minutes. I should months. have been here. I should have been here. It's you. Nice welcome home. A jackal as ever, sniffing the air, looking for your prey. Since you don't seem to know, my father's asking to see me. What? So, being the dutiful son, here I am. Unequal shares. But his restored inheritance will be a fortune enough. I wish I could understand. You're worried about your money. Oh, of course I'm not. You'll still be a rich woman. I'm not interested in that. I had to do it. Why? To give Arthur his due to tie up the loose ends. If there's a God, if 
that I'm going to have to justify myself. Poor father. I only wanted to do the right thing. Now he's gone. I can't believe it. Bearing up well. Only thanks to you. In your morning. You and yours. Twenty yards of bombazine. Madam Morgan said it had to be. What now? I haven't thought. The brewery. Lucian? That's very optimistic. Just me. Always like to walk along the bright side of the street. I feel this to be as great a loss to myself. The acquaintanceship of Mr. Havisham occurred most propitiously for me when I conceived that my trust in my fellow mortals was ebbing. Your father had an undue sensitivity, for a man, I mean, as to the wants of a noble woman, the which he insisted on calling me, left prematurely widowed. Prematurely widowed? How many hours did my father spend in this room? He gave his life to the brewery, Miss Everton. And now I'm sitting in his chair. Malt duty, Mr Ambrose. One and fourpence a barrel, then two and fivepence, and now in no time it's gone up to four and fivepence. There's talk of a war with France. Some of the full-time jobs will have to become part-time. There's good in it, too. Small-house brewers are having to come to the common houses for supplies. We shan't tell the workers that. <laughs> Your father would have said just the same, you know. I'm a chip off that old block, am I? Maybe if you told me that at one time, Mr Ambrose. Now, though, it pleases me to think so. At some point, the door of this house will be fully open to you. But not just yet. Not just yet. Tongues like to wag. London. Can we meet in London? I'm not tired of life, Catherine, but of London, yes. London's common currency. Everybody's got their grubby claim on it. Let's go somewhere that's just our own. Where? The Downs, Tunbridge Wells, the Weald. Dear Sally, I wish I knew that any of my letters had found their way to you. Is there some complication with your cousin in London about sending them on? For all I know, you may no longer even be in Hertfordshire. And now that your mother has left the town, there is no one I can ask. Oh, Sally, I do miss our confidences. I have so much to tell you. That's all right, Martha. You can go off with Jenkins. Yes, miss. Be back by four o'clock, both of you, will you? Yes, Miss. What is it? Nothing. I just feel like smiling. See what you do to me. Mm. I can only draw you well enough. But I'll always remember you like this. You sound almost sad. No, no. Maybe there's a little sadness mixed up in it. It's a pity we have to steal the time. What do you mean? If we couldn't organise things so that this was our life, the main part of it, I mean. No guilt. I could hand over some of my work to others. That'd be a start, wouldn't it? A start, yes. Let me think about it. You owe me an explanation, Arthur. If you must know, they go dunning, demand money with menaces. Are they owed money? I'd give them the damn money if I had it. My inheritance is coming over ten years, remember? The father must have thought it would teach you the virtues of economy. What? Always being kept short. <sighs> Hardly that. Well, it's, it's the interest. That's the killer. Adds up and up. What's it for? Past pleasures, shall we say. These men frighten me. And me. I swear they do. I swear on our father's dead body. Just tell me how much. You're keeping the heat from our guest, Arthur. And he should loosen that nice embroidered waistcoat. Must have cost you a lot, Compasson. Arthur. Or was it a present? I always stand by the fender, then I can spit the stones into the fire. First rate cherries we get, Compasson. I'm sure they are. A oh, bit of an expert, are you, on cherries? It's a very old orchard. It's mentioned in Peeps. Peeps peeped into our orchard. And guess what he saw? I'm very sorry about Arthur. Not at all. I've looked for redeeming features. I just can't find any. Somewhere there must be. 
And now you're off to Norwich? Yes. At the land agency? This man has to work. No rich uncles. How long for? Just till the middle of next week. Poor you. No. I really don't think I deserve your sympathy, Catherine. You need to get a carriage. Let me provide you with transport. Catherine, I couldn't possibly... I... Then why did I say it? I'll listen out for the horses as they turn the corner. The singing of the chassis springs will be the sweetest music to my ears. Soon. Soon. The temptation. You leave me to my mind's worst devices. I feel I have no shame. None. You drive me to the limits of myself. I can make believe you're here with me, Charles. Charles. Make believe. Make believe. Making love. I hear from Tice that your knowledge of the trade is very impressive, Mr. Compasson. I met a brewer once. I can remember a lot of what he told me. Teach you what I know, if you like. <laughs> You're schooling me. Well, I'll need your advice. I mean, I would appreciate it. I'd if be you... honoured. Couldn't have a better teacher, could I? So, uh, maximum production was 12,000 barrels per annum. I want to make that my own target. Right. At the moment, I'm involved in negotiations to buy another five public houses. Expensive? They're each between 230 and 480 pounds. We've now 36 tied premises. What's the total? Publics we supply to, including those we own, 86. Impressive. <laughs> Can't you stay for a while? And set the good citizens' tongues wagging. Well, if you really have to. We can't always do as we want. No. There are rules, precepts. You're right. Of course. Trying to find excuses for him, Charles. He'd drive a wedge between us if he could. But you told me he wasn't up to it, didn't you? He lacks experience. His temperament, though. He'd ruin the business, given a chance. Couldn't he learn? No. Admit it, he'd be useless in a situation like this. So, what can I do about it? Look, Arthur needs money. Access to money. Don't I know. What's it for? Gambling? Very probably. Our concern, though, is to get him off our... Off your hands. Yes, yes. So, you have to pay him more. What? No, I thought you no, said... Wait a minute, Catherine. Pay him in return for something. Something that you want. What's that? What do I want? His share in the business. I beg your pardon? You heard me. Yes, but... If you pay, if you pay for his holding in the brewery, you see what the advantages are, don't you? I think I do. Then you won't need to worry about him spoiling your plans. He wouldn't countenance... No, you don't know that. But if I ask him... It, it could be done in stages. And the cost? It would cost you a pretty penny, but think of the profits. It would mean I take over all the running for myself. Not necessarily. I don't follow. Would you not consider engaging some assistance? What kind of assistance? Sharing the responsibilities. Someone buying in? But we'd be getting rid of... No, no. Turning it over to a new senior manager. <laughs> Why did your father send you off to Durley Chase? Not so you'd come back to roll up your sleeves, so to speak, and run a brewery and a business this size. But I don't know who... <sighs> <laughs> who is there? Who do you think? You. I didn't dare hope. If we can be together... Give me your hand. Oh. It's all right. I shall ever be discreet. You don't have to be. Remember, rules and precepts, Catherine. Rules and precepts. Oh, come to me. Why don't you come to me? Charles, please, here. Make me. Make me. That's Arthur's asking price. He doesn't undervalue himself. He won't give an inch. You're quite sure? Quite sure. You're hesitating. 
It was my father's wish for his son, his atonement. Here's the letter from Arthur's lawyer, our authorization. Oh, I need some air first before I sign. I, uh, I hear you've had a visitor. Oh? Mr. Jaggers. Who's Mr. Jaggers? I didn't care for Snee. He was father's lawyer. I took my business elsewhere. Jaggers is a lawyer. Clever young fellow, too. Social call? He was just checking up. He'd been aware I was drawing on my personal funds. He misses Little, our friend. The lawyer Arthur's using? Yes, Crabbit. Apparently, he's a crony of Snee's. Is that significant? The coincidence is peculiar. Damn, Arthur. He is damned. Catherine. Supper. I promised you supper. This way, follow me. Mrs. Pollen will have got everything ready for us. See, Sally, the bloom on me. Oh, Sally, where are you when I need you? Look at me. The fire under my skin. I must go now. Must? <laughs> you wouldn't be trying to dissuade me, will you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, introduce me to bad habits. Who can say? Oh, I think I made too free with the wine. Not as much as I. No? <clears throat> uh, so? Back to your quarters? Back to my lair, yes. There's a wind got up, I think. I can hear it up inside the chimney. Refreshing. Might sober me up a bit. I'm very pleased I could entertain you. The pleasure was all mine. That gives me pleasure. <laughs> oh, my head. Catherine. I don't want you to go. Come to me. Oh, Charles. Oh, don't leave me, please. Catherine. Let me help, oh, please. Who is it? Catherine! It's Arthur. In God's name. I demand to see my sister! What's he doing here? Let's make myself scarce, then. What? I'll have to go. I don't want them to discover me. There's a back way out. I'll show you. Come on, follow me. Deserted, are you? Terrible shame, that is. I'm sorry, Miss Havisham. I couldn't stop That's him. That's all right, Mrs. Pullen. Well, since I was passing by this godforsaken hole of a town... He won't be staying. You can tell the watchman that, Mrs. Pullen. Yes, Miss Havisham. <laughs> oh, Catherine Havisham, with all her charms and money to boot, who'd have thought it? Supping alone. What is it you want here? All men are brutes, Catherine. Tricksters. Take my word for it. I'd believe that if you were all I had to judge by. Oh, but then I'm not all you have some blah, blah, blah. There was, a, there was the old man and your Chadwick lover boy. Only he wasn't. Who on earth told you about that? And now, uh, what's his name? If you've come for something, fetch it and then get out, or I'll get you thrown out. <laughs> Who's going to do that, tell me? Don't wait to find out. <laughs> That's my father's crop. Which is where it all began, that morning in the stables, remember? That's not your crop, I said. I fancy it, though. Some pizzle this bull's had. <laughs> That's going to be your final word. <laughs> I'm hungry, famished. I'll get some food sent out to you. Could drink that brewery dry. And the tankard. Oh, Lady Bountiful, sovereign of all she surveys, is that it? The workmen do my bidding now. <laughs> Not from what I've heard. You want to disprove me? Your dress is a little dishevelled, sister. I wanted a change from Compting House ledgers and rest books. Quite right, too. Private ledgers. Debts and liabilities. Reading my father's script and the clerk's figures, looking for discrepancies. Are there any? Oh, let's not talk about that now. I wanted to clear my head, to let my eyes see as far as they could. And I wanted to show you some more of Kent. Is that the windmill you were telling me about? The black windmill? The very one. Come on. I wanted to see you from inside. See the view. Kent shimmering. There's the town. Where? The way over there. Oh, yes. We're like gods up here, aren't we? I wanted you to see 
All the beauty in our county, in England, in the world. It's very warm. Oh, it is. I must unbutton my sleeves. That's better. Beautiful. What? The view, of course. Oh, I knew you'd think so. Sometimes we just have to be brought to it, don't we? Beauty. Oh, what's that? From behind you, the sails. Look. Oh, the sails are turning. Oh, let me feel the breeze on my face. Oh. oh let me too. Oh, stand by me. There. Close your eyes. Have you got them closed? Yes. I wish... What? Couldn't it always be like this? Always? Are we going to continue just as we are? Continue? Like how? The arrangement to Havisham? No, I'm not talking about the firm. I mean the two of us. Like this. You in Satis' house? By yourself? Charles? Yes? Charles, shouldn't we think of getting married? What? Oh, I'm... Married, did you say? I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. Whatever was I doing? Uh, no, no. Uh, no. Let me think. Oh, Charles, I rushed into asking you, standing here. I just felt... No. I shouldn't have. No, um, the idea, it's just, uh, I was taken aback. That's all. But... But? Shouldn't I have been down on my bended knee to you? You mean you're... On my bended knee, like this, to say yes, if you, Catherine, judge me worthy. When we're married, then I can allow you to lead the life of a lady. Meaning? Meaning I shall be able to take over the running of the whole brewery. You'd run it on your own? You trust me, don't you? Oh, of course I do. And you can be wife, mother, grand dame. You don't think it's beyond my capacities? Oh, no, no. Then that's settled. Yes. For when the time comes, once we're man and wife. <laughs> Over! Over! <laughs> Pulling. If I could find her, Sally should be my matron of honour. She was our talisman, after all. Don't you think? Never mind, Sally. Let's be selfish and just think of ourselves. Catherine! Yes, I'm in here. Well, you look a little troubled. What have you heard? Jaggers again? Oh, no, no. No one from Durley is going to be able to come. Isabella and Marianne are with their mother in Wales at the Wells, their brother's in Devon, and Edmund says he's praying for me, so his letter can go in the fire. It don't matter. No. Let's change the subject. France. I'm sorry? <laughs> for our honeymoon. Ah. Or Switzerland, or Italy. The choice is yours. Or somewhere warm, with the sun shining in antiquity, beauty... <laughs> Venice. Naples. Oh. <laughs> Naples and Venice. Naples and Venice. Oh, Sally, Sally. Wherever you are, wouldn't you be glad for me? I wish you were here. I wish I knew where you were so you could share my happiness. I shall be Mrs. Compeson. Catherine Compeson. Catherine Havisham Compeson. A Havisham still... Always that. We'll stay on here by the fire, Mrs. Pollen. Yes, madam. Sir? A little while. I wish you didn't have to rush away. It won't be for much longer. What I have will be yours. And what you have will become mine. I have the better of that deal. <laughs> and I shall honour you and obey you. As I must swear to do. You will be in charge of the brewery, and I shall oversee the house. And when I have to go off on brewery matters... I shall pine. But I shall leave the running of Havisham's entirely to you. The past life isn't anymore. 
<laughs> You're dreaming. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm sorry. You get so far away sometimes, Charles. Do I? You're not going to go into a brown study, are you? You look a little... Preoccupied. Reflective. Downcast. It'll be all right. Everything will be fine. I promise you. Is it really the day? My wedding day? It is, miss. Already. Your bath, miss. The bouquet, Miss Havisham, just delivered. See, it still has the dew on it. And yellow ribbons. Some tea, Mrs Pullen, and a coddled egg, and a piece of toasted bread with cherry jam. And that's all, madam. Oh, it'll be a while till the wedding breakfast. That's all, thank you. <sighs> My hair. We'll pomade and set with silver combs, and then we'll net. Eyebrows first, then we whiten the face, paint the lips, ring the eyes with coal. The dress. Is it me? Oh, it's beautiful, miss, isn't it? It's the best. I'm sure, miss. Bath lace, gold foil at the back. Such tiny buttons. Silk. French silk. Lyon silk. We've laid out the train. Twelve feet to the inch. Half past eight, is it? Just gone, madam. An hour and a half left. You can leave me now, Mrs. Pullen. Do you have everything you require, Miss Havisham? Yes. I shall leave my slippers until last. I shall sit and be quiet. Yes? Excuse me, Miss. A letter's been delivered. Oh, leave it over there. I shan't read letters. Oh, no. I have some time. Let me see it. Who it might be from. Miss. <laughs> Miss? <laughs> oh, it's in Mr. Compasson's hand. You did well, Biddy, bringing it to me. Sally. Sally, look at me. It is me, isn't it? Oh, tell me it is. Painted up like a doll. A worldly, sophisticated mannequin. I frighten myself just a little. Whoever she is. Oh, touch the mirror glass. Oh, it's cold. Warn me, someone. In Naples, there'll be heat once we get there. We'll climb the volcano. With Charles, I'll never be cold again. Only loved and cherished. Oh, I want to be loved and cherished. Led to the light. Oh, the letter. His letter. I cannot but expect that the contents of this letter must greatly aggrieve you. Oh. Because I do recognise how much your heart was set on our union. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. What I must say will distress you, I'm certain. Oh, God. God, Jesus, God. And I can think of no way of preparing you easily for it. In short, Catherine, I cannot be your husband. Oh, oh. I hope that with the passing of the months, oh. you will find it within you to offer me some measure of forgiveness. Oh. It's a joke. It's a test for me. To offer me some measure of forgiveness. Oh, no, 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 no. You will recover your spirits. And a light and some worthier suitor for yourself than I could be. still, though absent, heard and saw him. Girl! Miss? Lock the doors of the dining room, do you hear me? Don't let them disturb the feast. The wedding breakfast must be left just as it is. Wilt thou have this man obey and serve him, and, forsaking all other, keep thee only unto him so long as ye both shall live? 
The woman shall answer. I will. What's that, madam? Don't you want to take off the dress now? But you see, I have to be ready. When, madam? He just needs more time. There's been a misunderstanding. And the dress, madam? Not yet, not yet. Tea, Miss Havisham. Some toast. You haven't eaten at all, miss. Now brooding darkness spreads his jealous wings. And the night raven sings. She won't speak to us. Well, nothing that makes sense of. She only talks to herself. Sounds like gibberish. It must mean something. Something to her. Unlucky Dido, burning in her madness, roamed through all the city like a doe, hit by an arrow shot from far away. I need to be dressed. It will soon be time. But though she runs for her life through copse and glade, the fatal shaft clings to her side. The bolters isn't balms. They've worked, I think. They've brought her temperature down. Steam and ice. She's sleeping now, Doctor. Deep sleeps. How soon hath time, the subtle thief of youth, stolen on his wing my three and twentieth year. My hasting days fly on with full career. But my late spring, no bud or blossom showeth. And is there any word? Of who, miss? Of whom? Who else would I be talking about? Well? Nothing, miss. No communication? None. Look at me. Yes, miss. Half my hair is white now. With, with the, the shock, miss. Who would want to marry me? I can't say, miss. No, neither can I. The news must have travelled some way by now. That's just people, miss. About the Havisham girl down in Kent. Strangest thing. Left standing at the altar. It, it could be worse, miss. Worse? The shock of it. Your hair in that. You could be dead. <laughs> yes, yes, this is the address you have. King Street Blackheath. And the name Compison. Oh, but he's gone from here now. A friend of his told we had me. We'd no idea the fellow had any friends. Never in one place long enough. And his wife put up with it, God alone knows. His wife? She seemed a better. But the more fool her for picking him, say I. Can you tell me where he is now? Well, if you really want to know. Are you looking for someone? Oh, I'm just waiting. I see you have a blue umbrella. Yes, it threatens rain. Oh, the colour, I was thinking... It was a present. I knew someone with a blue umbrella... Is it so unusual? Or the same shade, greeny blue. Yes, it is. She had one just like it. A lady over there. Well, used to be over there. Mrs. Compison. Used to be? Well, they're gone now. Do you know where to? The Compisons? Yes. Only I wasn't supposed to tell anyone. You can tell me. I can? We... We were well acquainted, he and I. Not from Kent. Yes. Why do you ask? Oh, his wife was from there. He had something to do with a brewery in those parts. Only it didn't work out for him. No. No, it didn't. You know about it? I'm just... an observer now. But I would like to find out very much how to get hold of him. Can you help me? Well, I, I don't know. Oh, please. Please. This is Compinson to the door. Thank you, driver. I'll send the girl out for these other packages. Nell? Nell? <gasps> Can it be her? The voice, the profile, the copper hair. Yet once more, oh ye laurels, and once more, ye myrtles brown. Nell! Quick, girl, come at once and help. Everything I told you. The clothes, the walk, my pride. Arrest the flow of rivers, make the stars move backward. Call up the spirits of deep night. Oh, Sally. Sally, Sally. Goose and cabbage, cocoa tree, Bombay grab, swan and sugar loaf, three nuns and hare, king lud, foul anchor, ship aground, world upside down. 
world's end. Fetch me my wedding dress, Mrs Pullen. Yes, miss. With the veil on, my hair is no longer white and grey. Who would know my age? And fetch my satin slippers. Yes, miss. It's the face that holds everything together. Paint it white. Powder it and sweeten it with perfume. A slash of colour on my lips. A rim of black coal round each eye. Let your blood run cold at the sight. Doors must always be closed, Mrs Pullen. Yes, madam. Window sashes lowered. The shutters and curtains drawn. Sunshine is another destroyer. If that is your wish, Miss Havisham. For light, candles. Madam. And I shall have the clocks stopped. Pardon me, Miss Havisham? Stopped at 20 minutes to nine. Their metal hearts will never beat again. I've allowed no one else to see me, Mr Jaggers. My beautiful dress. Leon silk, bath lace. Gold foil, see, on the back. Silk roses round my brow. I had a Honiton veil. Might I restart the clock for you, Miss Havisham? It stays as it is, sir. Ah. I think I understand why. Perceptive indeed. If I had only chosen others so wisely. What is the news from Little Britain? As ever. I see the underside of men's characters, I fear. We are talking in general terms. Not necessarily. Ah. Can I speak his name? Speak his name? Compasson. He's had charges brought against him in the past and got off by the skin of his teeth. Forgery of documents, passing stolen banknotes. But his luck will run out. Embezzlement, I gather, is his new trade. He's living, I've ascertained, with... His wife? Certainly. And with Mr. Arthur Havisham. Arthur? For the moment. Arthur couldn't stand the man. So your half-brother claimed. Arthur got bought out, though. Exactly. I'm sorry, I don't... Would Cumberson... Would it have occurred to him to get you to buy Arthur out if he hadn't known that was what Arthur wanted to happen? What? They... They discussed it first? In quite a detailed way, I should think. Before it was suggested to me... It was imperative to them. You should be the last to know. A plot, you mean? Between the two of them? Splitting the profits on the deal between them. I think you'll find it makes a kind of sense, Miss Havisham, criminally speaking. Was that all it was? I, I would advise against upsetting yourself, Miss Havisham. Perhaps it was to get the better on Arthur. He was going to marry me to prove he was his own man. It didn't matter he was married already to Sally. He could have us both. But Arthur made it impossible for him. He threatened him, said he would tell me about Sally. Was that how it was? Miss Havisham. Jesus God, boxes inside boxes. I can't even say the man's name now, although he would have been my husband. Enough, Miss Havisham. Enough now. If only he'd had no heart at all. Didn't he love me a little? A little in return when I gave him so much? Didn't I move that heart? But Arthur decided marrying me wasn't part of the deal, was it? You're forgetting yourself, old chum. Not Satis House material, are you? It's over. Oh, no. It's hardly even begun, my friend. Because now, I'll never know how much of it he meant, how much was true. You can go, Lizzie. I'm Ellie, miss. You can leave us now. You know, I'm starting to forget what he looked like. It's as if the features are being rubbed away. Or weren't really there to begin with. He evades me now, I realise. Because he always did. I was in love with someone who didn't completely exist. I half imagined him to life. I was in love with love. What was it Plato said? Do you know your Plato, Mr Jackers? Too little of it, I should say. I heard it once in the Durley Chase schoolroom. It's stuck in my mind. Love is not with the beloved, but with the one who loves.
Mr. Jaggers. Miss Havisham, concerning the matter we discussed... I've been impatient to hear your arrival. Enter. I bring my charge, as you see, and Nurse Bottle to assist me. Madam. So, this is the child. Indeed. Step forward, Agnes. Oh, no, not Agnes. Estella, she shall be. But never mind. Step forward, child. She's a little shy, madam. She quite lacks sophistication, as I advise you she would. Certainly you did, sir. But sophistication can be purchased. Money can do all. My life's lesson. It can destroy, but it can redeem, too. Come here, child, so I can see you. A child to learn all I can teach her. How to protect herself. How to guard her heart. Oh, what a beauty you are. What a heartbreaker. Oh, yes, I see very well why you picked this one, Mr. Jaggers. One day, men will fall at her feet. And she will be indifferent to their suffering. She will be invincible. So... What do you think of Satis House, Estella? Does it please you? Is it agreeable to you? It couldn't not be agreeable to her, miss. It will be the only home she has ever known. My Estella will remember nothing else. In Havisham by Ronald Frame, Catherine was played by Emma Fielding. Charles Compison was played by Liam Brennan, Mr Havisham by James Bryce, Arthur by Michael Percival Maxwell, Isabella by Emma Curry, Marianne by Noreen Layton, Lady Chadwick by Joanna Tope, and William by Gregor Powery. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The play was directed in our Edinburgh studios by Patrick Rayner. BBC Radio 3, it's now just gone 14 minutes to 12, and it's time for me to hand back to Anthony Burton for the last leg of today's Christmas Across Europe, Radio 3's unique celebration of Christmas, which brings together cultures from eight different countries. Hello again. For the next hour and a quarter, we have a late-night postscript to our earlier sequence from the European Broadcasting Union's special day of Christmas music. We're going to hear music which was broadcast live to the rest of Europe earlier in the day, a concert of Polish Christmas music, ancient and modern, from Kraków, and before that, some lively brass music, which was broadcast this morning from the main studio of Austrian Radio in Vienna. The performers are Mosiel Brass, and they begin with a well-known polka by Shostakovich.